Um, it brings me huge pleasure to introduce everybody to four participants, two Ukrainians, uh, two Spanish artists from a younger generation uh, who have been spending some months and you'll be seeing their work in just a few minutes now. Uh, let me please introduce Jorge Dabalina mm -hmm. uh, and Rosel Domingo. Uh, they're mu uh, multimedia artists and researchers based here in Valencia and members of the Laboratorio de Luz research group at this university, UPV, where they are working on their doctoral thesis. They have performed at various festivals, artistic residences and exhibitions and have had exhibitions in La Matadero, Madrid, CCCC, Utopia, Las Cigarrellas, <laughs> uh, La Mutante, Belles y Bents, and Alta Raz Anas de Grau. Sorry for my <laughs> translation. Uh, so welcome both of you. Uh, Sofia. Uh, Melnik is a multimedia artist from Ukraine. She graduated from the Liv National Academy of Arts de Department of Contemporary Art Practice. She works in video arts, performance, installation and sound and has participated in several local collective exhibitions and festivals of young artists. In her work, she conveys the sensual and the whimsical, combining symbols from politics, religion, cultural traditions. And finally, but not least, Ruslana Kluchko. She, no, Ruslana. <laughs> you're there. Hello. Come on. Okay. Um, she's over here. She's a visual artist and photographer from, from Ukraine. She works mainly in Kiev and participates in all Ukraine and international exhibitions and residences. She works in various media genres, such as art book, photography, graphics, video, and animation. She's standing up now. Stand up again so we can see you. <laughs> she explores changing in natural and urban landscapes by interaction with local contexts. Her particular interest is dealing with trauma and methods of healing. And at the end here, we have Katarina. Pokora. She's a Ukrainian artist who delves into topics such as the fragility and the human relationships with the environment. Her work spans various mediums, including installations, objects, photography, and graphics. And she holds a degree in monumental painting from Lviv National Academy of Arts. I don't know whether monumental painting is a subject in many Western universities or art schools. But when I spoke to my mother-in-law two days ago, who is Bulgarian, and I have the huge pleasure of living with her, she said, monumental art, it's the only direction. So she was very pleased to know that you were on this um, panel today. So colleagues, artists um, from two different countries, I'd like to ask you, if I may, a very, very specific question. What is the other? Pardon me? What is the order? Just to put the... Okay, well, look, let's, um, let's start with you while you're okay. there. Okay. <laughs> we have... <laughs> I, I, was, I, I thought that we were starting because you... Yeah, let's go. First. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah. Good morning. First of all, thank you for inviting us to participate in this project. Um, it has been great experience sharing this the residency with all the artists, with the Ukrainian part and the Spanish part. And the installation that we presented in this exhibition is called Interference. And now Jorge will explain the process. Okay. Okay, so first of all, forgive me because I'm struggling with uh, headaches since, since yesterday night. So I won't be as active and extroverted as I normally perform, but I will do my, my best because I think the, this uh, act deserves it. So, well, first of all, um, Rosel and I are this kind of artists that we are more interested in the process, in the making, in, in, in having fun uh, by art, uh, than reflecting on a concept and then trying to make a formalization that uh, illustrates or uh, uh, makes a 
a physical presence of that concept. So we we were uh, trying to uh, to develop some of our current research in art. So uh, I have to uh, introduce some context f uh, first. Uh, Right now, we are researchers, as uh, Chris and Roser uh, told, in Laboratorio de Luz. That is a research group that is here on the UPB. Um, and my, my work right now is uh, um, researching about uh, recursivity and more concretely um, video feedback. It is a technique of video art that started to be used in the 70s. And on the other hand, Roser is now working with uh, experimental photography and using interferences on light and uh, some kind of materials in, in this uh, topic so to make uh, his pro uh, production in, in experimental photography. So uh, we, uh, okay, sorry. Um, Two more minutes, okay. So the first concept that I want to be bring to the table is related to this piece. The, the, I'm not sure because it's, it's kind of dark from here, but there is two mirrors, two big mirrors, uh, one on the opposite on the other, creating this infinite uh, corridor space. So this, this, uh, this piece uh, brings me to the idea to this thing that is right now, I think, quite important, that is called uh, echo chambers. Maybe you, some of you have heard about this, but this is a, a thing that happens right now in social media, since people uh, uh, is feeding the algorithm to get different contents uh, uh, personalized uh, by how you uh, are positioned ideologically. So, in the end, this this phenomena is uh, it makes that people having a, a, a determined opinion now receives the same opinion over and over, and this has kind of a re retroalimentation of a feedback property. So, in the end, it is quite a dangerous thing because uh, people that have some idea will only be exposed to that ideas. So in this context, I think we are interested in how interference, how the different or how the, the errors uh, stop this process of completely and uncontrolled uh, uh, feedback. So mm, I think I can leave it there. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Jose. Okay. Um, dear artists, we're going to be seeing your work later so although you feel okay, perhaps okay. that these five minutes are not enough, and they're not enough, um, it's not the last word, yeah, okay? No, no so uh, please bear with us. Um, Rosanna, come here. Tell, come and sit here, please. Uh, Rosanna, tell us a little bit about your work, please, and your approach to your practice. And what's been happening in the uh, residency over the last couple of months? Uh, my name is Oslana Klitschko, and I'm a visual artist and photographer from Ukraine. Uh, my art practice revolves around cycles and reflecting upon my personal experiences. Uh, I drew strands from routine, from reason, and exploring time, memory, cycles, and influences that lie within it. I frequently delve into the subject of ecology and landscapes. Uh, for me, politicizing the landscape is crucial, and I, think, uh, I, seek, I seek to think uh, it's uh, not just an <coughs> And I like to think about it not just through anthropocentric lens, but uh, also about non-human agents. And, um, I think that any landscape falls under human impact. And for this moment, the source of my artistic interest uh, lies in dealing with trauma and exploring the methods of healing. Um, 
living through collective historical traumas and working with memory and oblivion, getting new wounds due to the war in Ukraine. Uh, it's really connected with uh, our surrounding landscape. And working on my project for this residency, I focused on post-traumatic syndrome and uh, combined this with uh, ecology. Uh, over the past year and a half, my sensibility increased really hard. <laughs> and uh, sounds have taken a special role for Ukrainians uh, as we seek potentially any danger and um, we perceive this world really a lot uh, from the sounds. <coughs> and fireworks that once were uh, symbols of joy and party, now they feel, <coughs> now they evoke uh, readiness to escape uh, potential explosions. Uh, so in my work I used the symbol of dead birds and it's uh, really, uh, like fireworks are as dangerous as bombing for birds, so um, yeah, this work is about blurring lines between celebration and destination between life and death. I saw your work yesterday in the preview, and I think everyone will hear that your work is to work with the birds, the dead birds, and uh, although it's not on screen now, uh, I invite everyone, you won't miss it. It's impossible to miss. Uh, it's a very, very powerful piece of work, as is what we've just seen from our own two. Thank you very, very much for your Thank contribution. You. Thank you. Katarina, would you like to say a few words? Uh, yeah, of course. Let's just show the first picture. I think okay. Be enough. And Jorge uh, is managing the computer yeah. for us. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so... Uh, okay. Uh, hi everyone again. Uh, my name is Katrina Pokora. I'm here um, participating in the residency as a Ukrainian artist. And firstly, I want to say uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk today and just to show uh, some things we were working on lately. So, like, uh, again, shortly about my practice, I work with installation, graphics and photography but uh, mostly I'm interested in, uh, with the topic of human relations with the environment. And that's why um, basically I'm using materials that are pretty connected to our everyday life. Um, pretty often it's nature and materials and objects that I found outside. So like uh, while being here in Spain and in Valencia for the first time, um, I was trying to explore more uh, the local uh, history, but also find something that we have in common and some connections um, through which I can maybe uh, share my own experience in our in our story. And like the first place we visited, no, 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 uh, come back to the first image and we will keep on it. Um, Jorge. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, the first place we visited was Turia Garden. And um, like from my opinion, it's an incredibly beautiful place, and I was fascinated from it from the first sight, um, like from the tree structures, shadows, like everything. And later, during the discussion, um, like uh, on our Monday's discussion, uh, I found out, and I was struck by the fact that the history of this garden actually um, began from the river, that like it actually began from the ruin, that 70 years ago the river flowed it uh, and caused massive destruction of the city. And that's how this um, park was built. And like um, that was probably the first line of connection that I found um, between our histories um, and like between particularly my own history. Um, uh, you think like maybe uh, the main um, the main things about uh, our projects we will discuss later at the opening, but um, to conclude, the main idea that I was exploring here 
uh, was the image of the landscape, but not just an, an aesthetic image, but um, a landscape as, um, as an actor, as something that document and manifest uh, political and social processes that are behind the scene, that we are not uh, sometimes uh, see from it, like the language of a landscape and what it can tell us like what histories it can tell us and maybe some future uh, that we can think about from this uh, language. Yeah. Thank you very, very much for your contribution. Uh, as I say, we're going to see your work later, uh, but that's a very interesting introduction. Sophia, would you like to say a few words about your work? Please? Mm -hmm, okay. Uh, you might uh, scroll it for her like every every minute <laughs> okay thank you uh, yes my name is sofia i'm an uh, artist from ukraine from western ukraine and uh, at the exhibition you might see my work uh, at the second hall and uh, it's called uh, oh fauna phantasmagoria uh, and on the screen you may see uh, a shot uh, from the uh, my video artwork uh, and of a s this shot with a strange uh, white creature perhaps in the place that you um, that is quite familiar to you it's uh, Jardins uh, del uh, Real uh, more preciously it becomes immediately clear that it is a human in a mask, in the shape, in the shape of an animal, but uh, there is the next question, uh, what kind of uh, animal it is. Okay, I'm not going to, uh, to explain this decision and I want to leave it open to interpretation, but also in the gallery there is a concept of this work. Uh, but now I want to talk about an important detail that may go unnoticed. Uh, that uh, why is it work here? Uh, it is because lately the most dominant emotion I, I've been feeling is uh, the realization because uh, I know that we have a privilege, a privilege. Uh, uh, because we are now quite far from the world uh, of violence and we may choose not to read the terrible news and uh, discuss about the future, uh, but uh, future isn't exist. Uh, but war, brutal murders, genocide, ecocide, violence are real. And I don't want to talk about trauma uh, in my work uh, at something that need to be cured because there is difference between a person who, uh, who, who is in the front line and between a civ uh, civilian. And uh, there is a difference between a person who lives in the country of war and the person who live in the peaceful country. And uh, these factors have a very strong influence and uh, uh, this is because someone has experience uh, uh, which are uh, so close to death and uh, someone is closer to life. And uh, I think this is uh, madness and uh, my work uh, also about this too. Thank you. In the two minutes that we have left, three minutes, I have a question that I'd like to invite each of you to respond to in your own way. And the question is this. What does taking a scientific and research approach to the making of art mean in the context of this residency? It's not so usual, believe me, for so
so many artists to be conscious of the scientific and research approach underpinning so much practice these days. So what does it mean to you? Maybe, please, yeah, please. can I start? I think um, the research part took the main, uh, the main time of our residency because it lasts for two months and maybe the first month and a half was the research, uh, was the research of the opinions, was the research of the histories, um, like when we research both Ukrainian side and both uh, Spanish uh, history, and I think everybody, everybody uh, from our team did it. Like um, maybe uh, the main uh, the main benefit of it was uh, that we could discuss it in a group. Like that was a perfect team to work on. With and yeah, also the perfect team of Spanish and Ukrainian curators uh, who helped us to find um, like to find the line and like introduce us more to the local scene that can be unnoticed from mm. the first sight. So, so the emphasis for you on collective action and collective research was important. Yes. Thank mm, you, um, Sofia. Would you like to say something? Mm. Uh, I need a few minutes to think about it. Okay, let's move on. What, would you like to say something? <laughs> Jorge. <laughs> Maybe. I'm not sure about this. I have a few... Into the microphone. I please. have a few seconds to, to think about it, but I, actually, I instantaneously almost uh, think about uh, a book that Miguel Angel bring to the table a few moments uh, before. And is this book... Uh, the I think the translation would be something like the useful of the not useful or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. It's a book from Nuccio Ordine, mm -hmm. and I think art has this role of uh, letting us doing things that won't be possible uh, in different uh, fields mm -hmm. because it won't make any sense mm -hmm. to do things that are made in art. Mm -hmm. So I think that is a nice uh, optic to see the world, to see the world from a different perspective and then uh, reimagine and, and counterweight some of the ideas that uh, are starting to get in like solid block. So arriving later at the product through the process. Yeah, this, uh, like, yeah. Comments from our other, that's nothing, no? Anything else? That's okay. Please don't worry, because I'm going to now conclude by saying that really the answer to that question, it's a little bit unfair for me to ask it, but the answer to that question is in the gallery across the road. You have produced the most extraordinary work together as a unique collective of young Ukrainian and Spanish artists. And on behalf of all of us, and I think that only a few of us have so far seen your work, a huge congratulations. But the question, how does research approach, scientific approach, impact on the quality of our work as artists, for me at least, is totally present in what we're all about to see. So thank you very, very much, all of you. Thank you to everybody this morning for joining us. Um, I'd just like to conclude with one very, very final word, which is, if I may just take my notebook. Um, I think she's been popping out in and out, but we thanked everybody, uh, our key contributors this morning, the university and our colleagues, but could I also say clearly and openly thank you to Maria uh, Kabitska, who has been in and out this morning because the baby is with us today, which is a joy. Um, oh, there she is. <laughs> but on behalf of all of us, thank you very much for bringing us together today. Without you, this would not be happening. Thank you to all our participants and panelists this morning, and may the conversations continue for the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you.